Hey stars, welcome to my channel, Shades of Equilibrium. My name is Natasha and the focus of my channel is maintaining a balance in our everyday lives. Today I have something special for you. I saw this on YouTube and I said, I want to try this too. I want to hear what my kids have to ask me. You know, and they could always have it as a memorabilia for later on in life to look back at. So with no further ado, I have one of my sons here with me today and his name is Otani Yua also known as Ota. So Ota, come on in. I'm scared. I don't know what he's going to ask me. Honestly, I did not get to see these questions, so he's just coming up with it. And welcome, Ota. Thanks, Mo. How are you today? Great to be on the channel. Yeah, I'm nervous. <laughs> I don't know what you're going to ask me, but it's okay. So um, you want to tell any people about yourself first before we jump in? Uh, sure, I guess. Um, like my mom said, my name is Otani Yua, but I go by Ota, uh, a recent graduate from Howard University. Currently, I don't I don't need to say too much about myself. That's that's about it about me. Okay. Uh, we can go ahead and get into the video. Right, well, welcome, son. It's your first time making your big debut on my channel. Yeah, no, so. a little awkward, bro. <laughs> It's all right. So go ahead, shoot. What's your first question that you have for me? Uh, first question. I want to start off real light and calm. I've never gotten the chance to, you know, go to Jamaica, and like, you know, I've heard some of your stories. But my first question is, what is the best story that you have from your time in Jamaica? Oh, the best story. And it's funny because you're asking that question, and honestly, I've never heard these questions before, but. As soon as he asked that question, there's only one memory that just said boom in my mind immediately. And that was when we had a flood and we were still living in Jamaica. I think it was, it was in the 1980s, telling my age. <laughs> um, however, it was in the 1980s, we had a flood and my it was myself, my, my older sister and myself and my dad. And uh, we lived close to the, the seaside. We lived close to the seaside. And so they had a flood. And when the flood came in, it was a big flood. I don't even remember the name of the flood that they gave the name of that flood, but it was in the 1980s. And I remember my dad having me under his arms and having my sister on his shoulder. And the water was all the way up high to his chest. And that was how he was able to bring myself and my sister um, to his mom's house who lived further uptown like on around Rickett Street area those of you who are from Jamaica Sab Lamar Westmoreland welcome <laughs> yeah so that was one of my most memorable thing about Jamaica yeah. I think after that you would have learned how to swim yeah right I should, <laughs> I should have learned how to swim yeah. that's something though too about Jamaica because I was just talking to someone and we're actually the church is actually going to Jamaica this year yeah. And um, they said that they were going, and I said, I might just ask to get a couple of days off. So I was saying, I wonder if Ota would want to come to go to Jamaica for that. Yes. Think about it. That's an off camera type I of know, question. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Putting me on the spot. <laughs> but think about yeah, it. I'll, I'll think about it. Yeah. But yeah, thanks. I think I've heard that story before, but yeah, I mean, you only. Well, you oh, I have another six, story right? too that just popped in my head. Yeah. And most of them are dealing with my dad because uh, my mom migrated to America uh, at an earlier time. So, yeah, you my came sister. Over here when you were like six, right? Seven. So, I was seven when I came here. So, my dad was basically the one taking care of myself and my sister. And I remember that. I used to love to run around barefoot. <laughs> that means without any shoes. Did you get glass in your foot? Yes, I did. Oh, you remember that story too? See, I already told him everything. <laughs> I already told him, but I did. And I still got the mark on my foot bottom since that day. But back in those days, I don't think they did any stitches because I didn't get any stitches. Yeah. But they kind of like cleaned it and poured some stuff in it. And oh my gosh, that, that taught me. If nothing else taught me not to go barefoot with the many beatings I got for that. <laughs> That glass bottle was the last straw, so I started to wear my shoes after that. Okay, cool. And I'm gonna just stay in that vein, I guess. Mm -hmm. Not in the glass in the foot vein, but like the, 
know where you were. I'm guess a coming of age type of story or something like that. When you got to America, what was like the first thing that happened that made you think, oh, this is America, this is different? I remember when I was in Jamaica and the first time I knew I was in America is because I came on an airplane and the airplane was in the nighttime. So, oh, you saw the lights? yeah, and, and I, honestly, ever since that time, I love lights. I know people love to go by the beach and look at the beach and stuff like that, but I'm the type of person that put me up in the penthouse and let me overlook the city with lights. And to me, that is like, that is like the most beautiful thing for me. Um, but coming into America, seeing all the lights when we were coming in in the nighttime was just like, wow. Um, but when I really knew that I was different coming to America was when I was in school and I began to read. I was reading and the kids started to laugh because of my accent. Laughing. Yeah, they started laughing because of my accent. Yes. And I think with that, it kind of like, because there was a, a time um, in the earlier, now everybody wanted to be Jamaican, <laughs> but <laughs> there was a time when we, they used to be like, well, go back to your country, you know? Um, yeah, oh yeah. They would tell you go back to your country and say all different types of things. However, I remember I was reading in the classroom and I, I we, we speak English, so they understood what I was saying and I knew how to read. But the kids started to laugh, make fun of my accent, and it kind of like allowed me to go into a shell. So I did not really participate as much after that. Um, but that was another thing that I remember. But I know there was one teacher in the fifth grade, I'll never forget her name, Miss Jacobs. And she's the one that wrote that and allowed me to participate more in school and to have a good time. Yeah. See, and now you're hearing something that I've heard for the first time. I've never heard of Miss Jacobs before. Really? Oh, I remember Miss Jacobs. Miss Jacobs was such a beautiful teacher. She was an amazing black woman. And um, you didn't really find that many black teachers back then, and much less a woman. And she was just like a mother figure. She took us to the park. School was different back then. School yeah. was so different than what it is yeah. now. Because I even remember in school, they actually took us on a trip to Quebec. The French class, yeah. And we were able to go to Quebec and come back. Nowadays, you probably wouldn't have that experience. We did camping. That. Yeah, I didn't know you went to Quebec. Yeah, I did. Okay, so new Parlez question. Français. Oui, je parle oh, yeah, français. Yeah, I know you take Yeah. Français. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so new question. What is top five places that you've been? Top five places that I've been. Number one, stars. Sorry about that full part just now. Um, memory ran out on my card, so here we are again. Things happen. Yep. Kind of bring me up to this speed because I remember what we're yeah, talking about. We were about. talking about top five places you've been, and the first place that you mentioned was Paris that you abandoned us for. Ah, right, 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 and, and rightfully so. <laughs> <laughs> the, the second place was definitely Aruba. I loved Aruba. The view from our room. It is amazing in Aruba. Yeah, this is it. This is, this is what you work hard for. You want to be able to work hard and have fun too. Absolutely. Nice. And nice. without nice. the kids. Aruba is like just high up there. Wonderful things that the Lord has prepared. Oh my gosh, take it easy. Oh, this is a nightmare kind of drive, people. And I don't like heights. I don't like heights, but look at this. It is so worth it. The third place is Mexico. The fourth place would be um, the Netherlands. Our hotel is over there.
the Netherlands. I really love the Netherlands. Yeah. And then the fifth place would be Italy. I just want to mention I have been to any of these places, <laughs> not a singular one. Yeah. This is an incentive for him to work so he can I have work. the finer things in life. Nah, I work. <laughs> yes, but you do. He works very hard and I'm so proud of him. Appreciate yeah. that. But yeah, I think the first place on the list to go is Jamaica for me. Still have not been there. But yeah. Well, you have an opportunity like we were just yeah, <laughs> talking yeah, yeah, about yeah, yeah. earlier. We'll, so see if you can rupee in that call. Let's, we'll, we'll see about that. But all right, on to the next question. Uh, this is, I guess, transitioning into like more life type of questions. Okay. Uh, so how you were like 27 when you got married, right? 28? 26. 26. I was 26 years old when I got married. Yeah, so you were three years older than I am right now. And no, I don't think three years is like enough time for me. <laughs> we'll, we'll see whatever, you know, whatever God has in store and all of that. But how did you figure at 26 that that was a commitment that you were ready to make? Oh, okay. <laughs> that one took me off guard. All right. So at 26, I wasn't ready to make a commitment, honestly. I don't think I was, I was ready to make that commitment. I just think that there comes a time in life where you have to make certain decisions and if you want the big woman things you have to <laughs> you have to make sure that you put on a ring to continue to do those big woman things as a christian and so um i think that was one of the leading factors for me in regards to getting married at 26. um i was ready to do big woman things i already had my own place and so that i wouldn't further live in sin and you know when you're living in sin your self-esteem gets low and you kind of sink into a state of depression because that's what sin does to us and so i wanted to be legally active <laughs> and i thought i found the person that was motivated enough um, ambitious enough and respectful enough to do that way that's true that's true i feel like I'm probably going to have a follow-up question to that. Mm -hmm. I haven't, haven't thought of a follow-up question in this yet. But there's, wait for it. It might come. <laughs> it might come. You guys wait on it too. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to just go on to the next question that I had. It might follow the same vein. It might not. But mm -hmm. I guess when you were my age, when you were 23, what is something that you could, you, you wish you could go back and tell yourself? I wish I could go back and tell myself to go straight into graduate school. Mm -hmm. That would be something I would tell myself. I remember my professor in um, Brooklyn College when I was doing my undergrad, she said, leave from here and go straight into graduate school and get your master's in social work. And of course, as um, fast <laughs> as I was <laughs> I wanted to be independent and I want to have my own money and I wanted to do my own things and remember I had your brother at that time so I was also a mother that had to take care of a child so money was the main factor for me at that point in time and so instead of going to grad school I went to the place where she told me not to go to which is ACS Oh, she said not to go She there. said, do not go there. She warned us. She told us, do not go to ACS. Professor Howard, if you're still alive, God <laughs> bless your soul, because you were absolutely right. Should have went to grad school um, right after finishing up my undergrad. Should have had my master's in social work. And um, But God knows all things. He knows why he have me on this route and on this um this path yeah rather than the path that I think that I should have been on at the time what would you have done if you got your masters in social work that's that's the truth 
<laughs> That's the truth. Actually, I wanted to work in a hospital. I wanted to counsel people, and I think that's something that I always want to do is to counsel people. I was actually thinking of going into doing, becoming a life coach. When it first well, came are. out, I wanted to become a life coach, and I have a vision, and the vision is still with me, and I still haven't seen anyone come up and do that particular thing, so I ain't putting it out there because <laughs> I may be doing it one day. So I still have a vision when it comes on to counseling, and it's just in an unconventional way that the Lord has spoke to me about. So it may just, it may be something that I have to do a 360 and come back to after I retire, which is coming up soon. She doesn't look it though, right? She doesn't look like she's about to retire. Uh, <laughs> I guess, yeah, you mentioned like the graduate, I'm not gonna lie, like I feel like when you went back to school, mind you, we were in like elementary school, it's not like something that we really thought about that you were going back to school, but that's actually crazy that you went back to school and you were working at the time still, right? Absolutely. Yeah, she went back to school and was working and had three kids. <laughs> Insanity. But, and I don't know how, but by the grace of God, every time I, there's no way I could do that now. <laughs> I can't, yeah, that's, that's can't even get up out of the bed now. <laughs> um, so it, it was very challenging. I it was it. very, very challenging. Um, but it was something I wanted to do because I didn't want to stay where I was. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes when you don't want to stay where you are, you just have to do some things. And like my mom always say, if um, she said, what? Something, something. But if you want good, your nose have to run, mm. right? Yeah. So sometimes certain things, um, even though it's challenging, you still have to do it. And it might not have been fun, but now look, I can go back and I can say, I made a change and check out my video on make that change <laughs> while we on that. Yes, I was able to make that change. Like, comment, subscribe. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Tell them, tell them, tell them. Yeah, go ahead and smash that like button. Uh, this is my first time doing Give this. Give me a thumbs up. Yeah, thumbs up. And, uh, make sure you subscribe to this channel. All of that. And make a comment down there. If there's anything else you think he should have asked me or you want me to follow up on, go ahead and ask. Yeah. Uh, share with your friends and your family, but hey. then, uh, ooh, what was the next question that I had? Oh, I asked you what was something that you would have done differently. What is one thing that if you could do it over again a million times, you would do the same? If I could do something over again a million times that I would do the same, I would have my children. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I would definitely have my children because you know when they're small they they always say that when kids are small they tie up your legs you can't do what you want to do but as they go older as they grow older they tie up your heart and they have definitely been <laughs> tying me up <laughs> I mean, they're not prison. <laughs> where y'all at what time are you coming home where are you doing it you know it just really ties up your ties up your heart so I would definitely do that again yeah. and as a future parent what is one thing that you would tell me about being a parent I mean it's it's not that time yet guys <laughs> we got a ways to go but early advice what I would tell you as a man because I, I wouldn't, I don't know about being a man. I just know about yeah, being I just a, man, a as woman. A parent but general. as a parent, I would say to you to make sure that you're there. Mm -hmm. Don't miss those moments because in time, you don't get back certain moments. So I would just say that be there, be present, show up because ultimately, you know, that's going to be the thing that your child is going to remember. They're going to remember, oh, I remember when they came here. I remember they never missed that. You know, they were always here for me. Mm -hmm. So that would be the main thing I would say to you. Be present. And that, that should, this should go without saying to make sure that you grow them up in the fear and knowledge of our yeah, Lord and Savior, know, Jesus Christ. That, that, so, yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> we're, we're on the same page we're on the same page with that and um i guess in the same vein you touched on it a little bit earlier in terms of like committing to being married and all of that uh this isn't just for me but for everyone who's listening 
as somebody who went through being a young person, what, I guess, I mean, I've heard, I've heard a million different things, but just so that they could get a window into like some of the things that you tell us, what would be your advice on, you know, walking the way you're supposed to walk? I'm not gonna lie, and maybe I just haven't lived it yet, mm -hmm. but I feel like once you have a family and like you have responsibilities and commitments and all of that, it looks from the outside looking in a little bit easier to <laughs> be like, yeah, it, it's probably not, but like, it looks a little bit easier to be like, all right, I'm settled. This is like what I have to do. I've come too far at this point. But when you're younger, it's like, I have time to get to that point. What would, what advice would you give to young people? to like preserve themselves or to be focused, stay locked in, I guess. Okay, what what advice I would give to a young person to stay locked in both spiritually and like Okay, okay, maintaining that balance. Like, that what the challenge yes. <laughs> challenge channel is all about. It's hard. It's hard. Um, you young people are growing up in a different time. I think same temptation just in a different way fornication still a sin alcoholism still a sin um cussing and carrying on still a sin you know these were all the things that we were tempted with i just think that now things are a lot much more open things are a lot much more accessible and the same advice that i would give to my younger self which the bible gives is run <laughs> it said flee right flee and, and and it really means to run run right when you see certain people doing certain things flee run run away from them when you see that a person is going the wrong way when you see that this is a temptation that you know that you're going to get yourself into run the other way run away from it you, you, I've been there, I've been there. I told myself I want to do it and I did. Right? I'm going to have self-control and that control had control of me. Right? I didn't, I really didn't have self-control and I was fooling myself. So the only way that you can live godly as a young person, stay focused as a young Christian person and live a godly life is to run and flee from youthful lust. It's lust, and we all have it, and it's not going to go away. And I'm not going to pray that it go away, because you're going to need that later on in life for your wife, right? <laughs> so it's not nothing to pray away like, God, take this away from me. God forbid, because next thing you're not going to be able to please your wife. <laughs> so you got to control it. You have to be in control, and the way that you can be in control of it is to make sure that you don't sabotage yourself by putting things in front of your face or being around things that you know is going to cause you to fall or anyone else out there to fall run flee if there's any other word you can hear it's going to be right here flee <laughs> he's a runner he's a track star hey. <laughs> but, yeah, I think thank you for that I think that's all of my questions, if you guys have any questions, go ahead and leave those in the comments. But I think that's it for me. Thank you for answering. Thank you for having me on the channel. And thank you, my son, for coming up with those great questions. Um, we might bring you back again because we like you. We like how you roll. I, <laughs> I don't know if you're going to have yeah. the time, though, with work and everything yeah. else. But She's speaking for you guys. I don't know. <laughs> yes. He's an awesome son, and I thank him because he is very busy. He has so much to do. He's just coming in from taking care of something else out there, but he took the time out to be with me, and I am grateful. So, love you. thank you, Ota. I love you, too. And uh, Remember, stars, we can only do what stars do. We shine brightly. Hey, yeah. you know that. Like shine it. brightly. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.